Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share the most frustrating painting that I have painted in quite a while. <laughs> These are a uh, pepper, well it's a pepper, an Aloha pepper. I'm painting it with watercolor crayons. These are the Karen Dosh brand watercolor crayons and I'm working on tone tan mixed media paper from Strathmore. I uh, sliced up the pepper, set it on my cutting board in front of me and uh, just started sketching. Um, I think uh, I just haven't used watercolor crayons in a while and I had re I just done three paintings I really liked and um, you know I that's a really good streak it's a great streak I was due to have a real stinker and uh, I really really struggled with this one um, so I just wanted to say that to show you that yes you can pull it back from the brink and also give you a little encouragement if you too sometimes work on a painting and you just feel like it's you know hot trash and you can't seem to get yourself out of your own way because we all have those moments I don't know a single artist that doesn't have those dumpster fire paintings that they don't think they can recover. Um, sometimes it just takes a little perspective, like getting away from your work and coming back to it. But um, but everybody has that. So, you know, you are in good company if you have experienced that too. If you haven't um, and everything is sunshine and roses when you sit down to your art desk, well, <laughs> hats off to you. But I don't think that's a typical experience. I'm blocking in my colors now with the watercolor crayons. If you've never used watercolor crayons, um, they're kind of like, uh, they're firmer than a lipstick, but they're it's kind of similar in feeling. They're kind of like an oil pastel, but they're water soluble. Um, they're a little uh, slick. They're almost like if you took gouache paint and you added a little wax to it and you formed it into a stick. That's kind of how they behave. Um, they don't dry glossy, but they also don't dry matte like a gouache does. And um, the uh, the thing that's quite different between the watercolor crayons and gouache is that if you want to work over them with pens or with, um, oh, with like a, uh, and I'm talking like a, a paint acrylic paint pen, or if you want to work over them with a colored pencil, they do tend to want to scrape up kind of because they're kind of greasy. And we will have that experience in a little bit. So you'll see that, uh, you'll see basically what not to do today. Um, I put the cutting board in here and uh, this is a cutting board I've painted so many times because it's just, it's the most utilitarian one, one I use all the time. My husband made it. He's made um, so many beautiful cutting boards and um, this is one of the first ones that he made and I use it all the time. I love it. Um, and it's like, I feel like I know this cutting board so well because I've painted it so many times and actually I think I'm more happy with a cutting board than anything else in this painting. Uh, just a fami familiarity. And I think that's why you see a lot of artists work in series because if you paint the same thing over and over and over again, you really get good at it. You find new nuances about it, because otherwise you get bored if you painted it the same way every time. So um, if you ever feel like you're just not growing or you're stuck in a rut, try working in a series. Um, you can Google that. You can see examples of it. I did a series of hands for Inktober. That was really cool. That was really fun to do. I enjoyed it. I find it very challenging. And um, and I'm looking forward to what I decide to do for Inktober this year, because that was awesome. I just, I just loved looking. And I love looking back at the artwork that I created from that. So again, still, this is kind of boring. I know I'm just blocking in colors, right? It's, uh, it is not exciting. I started off this, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I started off this video when I recorded it, I was planning on, um, actually voicing it live. And I did like the first, um, Oh, I don't know, the first few clips I narrated live and then I was just, I was interrupted a few times. There's a lot of noises. Um, you know, the whole family's home. There's still workers coming and going from some different things that are still getting done. Um, almost done though. We've actually started moving in, stuff into the edition and it's like 99% done. Um, and most of what's left, my husband's going to do. So, so that's good. So, you know, not so many strangers roaming around. Um, but you know, there's just a lot of interruptions and I was having a really hard time getting in the groove with this. I mean, look, look at the, the left-hand side of this pi picture. I clearly used black when I should use brown on the edge of the cutting board. So one thing to uh, know about the watercolor crayons, Karen Dosh, I believe, um, make the highest quality watercolor crayons. They are my favorite. I've been using them for a long time. Um, and yeah, I think they've been around the longest. They might've even invented the medium. I have found the next best ones to be the Lyra watercolor crayons. They are a heck of a lot cheaper. I will tell you that. So if you're not sure and you want to try some out, try the Lyra ones. They're a lot less. It's L-Y-R-A. I'll try to link all the stuff I'm mentioning in the video description 
But if I forget, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. But um, those are the second best. They're nearly as good. Um, I just find them, I just find the Caran d'Ache to be the best. And then another couple options that are pretty good too. They're not exactly the same. They're quite a bit softer, almost like lipstick, would be the um, Prima Marketing Watercolor Crayon. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, they're called the Prima Marketing Water Soluble Oil Pastels. And you might even be able to find those in some craft stores. There's also the Mungio water soluble oil pastels. They're the same as the Prima ones. I'm pretty sure. I think I think Mungio makes some for Prima, and they are a bit cheaper. You can find those online, like Amazon, um, and also the Portfolio water soluble oil pastels by Crayola. Also very good. In fact, I had, I worked with a uh, with a artist who used these, and I really liked them. I tried hers, and um, I bought the uh, I bought the Portfolio by Crayola because they were like. Um, I think a set of a set of 24 was like eight bucks or something. And so I used those to see if I liked the medium, if I liked working like this. And you definitely could tell if you're gonna like working in this medium by using those portfolios by Crayola. I imagine they're still um, being sold, but you could definitely tell with either the Prima, the Mungio, or the Crayola ones, whether you like these before investing in a more expensive product. Um, the the uh, the oil pastels versus the, the crayons, they're both water soluble, but or water soluble oil pastels. You got to make sure you get that kind. Um, but they're just a little more transparent. They're a little more greasy and slippery. They feel like drawing with lipstick. Versus these feel a little bit more like a crayon. They're a little harder, but they they're more opaque. I guess they don't have as much uh, as many oils in them as the uh, as the like the oh my gosh water soluble oil pastels. But they're both fun and. Um, yeah, they're just just uh, just a lot of fun to use. I have uh, I've used other brands that I don't think bear really bear mentioning because they don't compare, and I don't want to get anyone confused. But um, but it's just a really fun media, and I recommend getting a watercolor crayon that's nice and soft that you can like put down a lot of product and layer up. Otherwise, it's just gonna look kind of wimpy and just be like a watercolor pencil. Which well, there's nothing wrong with watercolor pencils, but if you're trying to layer up, like a an acrylic or a gouache or an oil painting, you're just not gonna get that effect. I think that uh, the watercolor crayons can look a lot like an oil painting when done well. Um, but I will recommend that you don't work so big. 9 by 12 as I was working, I'm like, why did I work so big? When I was using watercolor crayons a lot, that's part of the reason why my watercolor crayons aren't very, worn very down, I would use like when I'd cut a mat, right, and I'd have a tiny piece left over, like a 4x4 four four piece or a 5x5 five five or 5x7, five I have a little piece like that left, that's what I do a watercolor crayon painting on. Because you could get really good detail, you could get, um, you know, you take your time on it, and it didn't wasn't a huge ordeal, but we're doing something like a 9x12, which isn't a big painting, but when you're working with watercolor crayons, it takes time. So um, I forgot that, because I hadn't worked with just watercolor crayons in so long, and I do eventually uh, add some of the media to it. Now you can pick up the paint, the uh, the media, with the wet brush right off of the stick and use it like a pan of watercolor. Now I also want to mention um, these are not like the watercolor crayons by Daniel Smith or Winsor Newton or um, American Journey, which are a little bit more for like uh, using as pans in your hand versus I mean you can sketch with them but they're not. They're not that layerable, and they are kind of expensive. So you just want to make sure you know what you're getting when you uh, when you purchase these products. I love the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, but they're not. You don't use them like this. I, I put them in a palette, and I use them like a like a pan of watercolor because they're a very affordable way to get Daniel Smith colors uh, and get that Daniel Smith quality. But they're not going to behave like this. So just make sure that the uh, the product you're doing is going to work well for you, so you don't get frustrated. You don't get any more frustrated than I was during this. But I have to say that cutting board, man, I really like the dimension I was getting on that cutting board. It's a really weird angle to be painting from because I'm because I'm standing up, I'm working at my big art table, and I'm looking over, looking down at the cutting board. So it's kind of a bird's eye perspective, but not quite. It's not directly over it. It's kind of like over and off to the side a little bit. So it's kind of a strange uh, perspective, but um, you know, I kind of enjoy challenging perspectives like that. And um, and I think that, uh, I, you know, I think I, I like it more the more I look at it. And as I'm watching the footage back, I don't see what I was so frustrated about because nothing is like jumping out at me like, oh, that's so wrong. That's why it's bothering you. Yeah, it's not bothering me now because this was like a week ago when I was working on this. When you give your your artwork some time away from it, you will forget how frustrating it was and then you'll be able to enjoy the artwork. 
Uh, you can scrub the, the crayons back pretty easily. This is a mixed media paper, a cellulose paper. It's not as robust as say 100% cotton uh, paper. So I won't be able to scrub it right back to like the tan, but I could go in with like a, um, a tan colored pencil or a tan watercolor crayon and, um, and you know fix that now actually what you probably don't realize is I actually moved um at some point here i went from the standing at the table to sitting at my uh, my work desk because i was getting so frustrated and like well if i'm going to be frustrated i want to be sitting down i want to be comfortable i want to put on a podcast or or i don't know a show or a video just have something on in the background that can entertain me as i you know muddle through this um unfortunate painting but uh, so i just i don't know what at what point i did that but at some point i decided to go go sit down at my at my table and just kind of like you know see where this journey takes me because i at this point i was thinking well i'm filming it there's no guarantee that the world is going to see this one because i was not uh, i was not loving it now the gouache I'm using is a product I just reviewed uh, about a week ago. It's the Arctic Gouache. That's a, um, it looks a lot, so the packaging is very similar to the Hemi Gouache. And um, the, it comes in the little cups, the little jelly cup type pots. And um, I really like it. I'm actually, it's, it feels really good. A lot of times like the student gouaches feel kind of thin um, and then I let them dry out a bit so I can control how much water's in them. But these actually felt thick enough out of the pot that I actually had to add a little water to them to get them to the consistency I wanted. So I was pretty pleased with those um, and they worked pretty well here. The only thing I didn't like was the bright yellow color of the palette. I kind of wish they left the palette a, a pale color, like white or gray, or even a pale yellow would have been fine. Um, but since gouache is opaque, it's not a it's not a deal breaker. I can see the color of my paint. I just got to, you know, it's right next to bright yellow, so that can make um, it doesn't make mixing hard, but it makes gauging how light or dark you need something to be because you got you're looking at it next to a bright yellow, which is going to um, put it in a different perspective than if it was just on white. So that's if you're a beginner, I probably wouldn't recommend using that palette right off I would use like a like a, a ceramic plate or something like that to mix on. So I'm using this gouache because I, I was feeling that I couldn't quite build up the um, the colors and the depth and the volume that I needed to with the watercolor crayons. They were just feeling a little too transparent and I think the reason that I wasn't able to build up the color intensity that I wanted was because um, the paper is really smooth. I love the Strathmore mixed media paper but it is very smooth so building up stuff is not great. It's wonderful for markers and then adding like a color pencils over it. Uh, it takes a lot of different media but because it's so smooth it does it is difficult with like pastel type medias and also the intensity of color is having a little bit of trouble with the bright reds and bright yellows with watercolor crayons because of the waxes that they contain it's really difficult to get a really vibrant red or yellow or black um because those colors tend to be really transparent and the watercolor crayons are more opaque. Now, if you look at the handle of the knife, that is the watercolor crayon. That's the brightest red. I think it's called ruby red. And it is definitely almost pink looking because it's opaque. It's an opaque red. So generally your your reds are going to be transparent unless it's like a, a cadmium red. And I don't think that any of the watercolor crayons have like real cadmium pigments. Don't quote me on that, but I don't think I have any pigment information on the watercolor crayons. I'll have to look on that see if they're available. I don't know if they were originally meant for kids, but honestly, I mean, I talk about like learning about these from an artist friend of mine, but honestly, I got my first, I had a little set of 10 Caran d'Ache crayons when I was probably about 10 years old, or I'm trying to think, cause it was back when my parents were building houses and my mom would paint the houses and my dad would build them. Him and his, you know, employees, they would build the, he had a construction company and they would build the houses and mom would go in and wallpaper and paint. And so um, I would go to work with them when I was little. So I was probably, I might've been younger than 10 actually, cause I was young enough that I was still, I couldn't be left home alone. And um, and I remember sitting in dad's truck and just playing with watercolor crayons while they were inside working on the house. Um, so I was probably younger than that. I was trying, I'm trying to think if my sister was born yet and I don't remember her being around or maybe she was home with mom and I was there with dad. I don't remember, oh, little, little brief jump down memory lane. I was young anyway. And, um, and mom had given me this set of watercolor crayons. I just thought they were just like magic. And I don't know if I used them up or if I lost them or what happened to them, but that was actually my first experience with Karen Dosh watercolor crayons. And then um, my friend, uh, my friend Ellen, who was the artist who uh, worked with me at the senior center, she 
uh, reinvented, reintroduced me to these. And then I got a little set of half sticks, which I think they sold as a student version of the Karen Dosh. I never saw them anywhere except a little tiny art shop in Orono, Maine. And I just thought that were great. There was like 15 colors, half stick size. I use those, practically used them up. And then I invested in the, um, the 84 set when I went on a crazy sale. Like this was probably back in like 2000. It was, um, maybe between 2000, 2002. It was, uh, it was eh, about 20 years ago, quite a while ago. Um, and they're just, they're just wonderful. I should use them more. And that's what I was thinking about. You know, I was like, oh, I want to use those more. Um, I've been like, I don't know, puttering around and moving stuff around. And, you know, you find these treasures, you find your precious, my precious, you find your precious. And that's like, oh, I got to use my precious. I haven't used this in a while. And uh, they're slow wearing. So it's like, well, there's no reason I shouldn't. And when I have to sharpen them, if I decide I need some detail and I want to sharpen them, I just sharpen them in a, uh, just a plastic palette. I got some at um ocean state job lot for two bucks they have like i don't know maybe 18 wells or something they're just little cheap plastic fold in half palettes and i bought a few of them and i use one for like uh alcohol inks and i use one for like water-based markers like my mermaid my jane davenport mermaid markers like because when i'm squeezing some out well i don't want to waste it because sometimes you want to squeeze the pen to get it going or you want to mix some colors and i just let them dry up in those palettes and I can reduce them with whatever solvent they use and uh, it's really handy. So I have one for watercolor crayons as well and then when I need like, like uh, often I'll need to sharpen the white so I can get a crisp detail. So I'll just sharpen it in the palette and then when I need like a bunch of white to paint like a large area that's white, like a sky or clouds or something, all I got to do is just wet my brush and pick it up. Or if I have a, if I break a, a pastel, I had one that like crumbled. I don't know what happened to it. Um, I just pushed that into a palette and let it, you know, and just sprayed it and let it turn into paint and you know, it's ready to go. And you can do that with any uh, woodless water-based product, like a woodless watercolor pencil or anything like that, and just um, add water to it when you want to turn it to paint. So I don't probably just like giving you a reason to hoard stuff, but it's actually useful. Just make sure you keep that palette with your watercolor crayon so that or with whatever media you're using it with so it's handy so you remember so like if you're like oh i just need a little bit of this and you've got that dragon palette we'll just use that up before you you know grab the new marker or stick or whatever and uh i forgot about the little sticker that was on the pepper i decided i wanted that to show so i stuck it down the on the uh, cutting board and it's really funny because it uh, the pepper is called aloha and it's got like a picture of a tiki statue which are really popular in hawaii and um, it's really funny because like on the side of the sticker, it says the Netherlands. So I thought it was probably like a Hawaiian pepper, pepper, but somebody told me, a Hawaiian viewer told me that very few things are grown in Hawaii, which surprised me. Oh, that's because it's like, man, to have all that food shipped into Hawaii is, um, I would think would be so difficult because it's so far away from a lot of stuff. Uh, but anyway the more you know, right? You learn something new every day. Uh, and now I'm just trying to add some details with my white Prismacolor, which is a really soft pencil. And it usually sticks on top of anything. But man, oh man, it did not want to stick on top of that watercolor crayon. And especially the watercolor crayon that had gouache on top of it, it was scraping the gouache off. So I, uh, I had to be very gentle by adding this in here and just kind of poke around very gingerly because I do love the look of uh, colored pencil on top of other media, especially gouache, because it gives us this luminous glow because um, colored pencil isn't 100% opaque. It's probably like maybe 60% opaque. So you still see some of those colors underneath just kind of glowing through. And I love that effect. And, um, but I was like definitely scraping off paint. I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? And it, like a hard tip on a pen would also kind of scrape off your paint. So uh, I bet what I could have used, what, what would have been a really good idea is to use the brush and pencil touch up texture in titanium white. I bet that would have worked really well, but I wasn't even thinking of that because that's a, you know, uh, uh, oil or wax colored pencil type product and not a watercolor product, however, or water media product, but because the Karen Dosh watercolor crayons have a water soluble wax in them, that would have probably been a much more archival product to use on top. I don't think it, anything is going to, because this is a work on paper, if I was gonna sell it, I would be matting it and framing it under glass. So I that would be uh, pretty well protected unless somebody comes by and scratches it with a fingernail, but it does get protected under glass. Um, but that's something I'm going to keep in mind the next time I use this product. If I find I need some really bright highlights and uh, and the gouache isn't cutting it, then I can then I can use that. I think gouache would have been fine as well because gouache is water soluble, will bond with what's underneath. But um, 
you know, here I'm trying to write, I'm trying to write with a, with a, with a gel pen. And it's just like, yeah, lady, it's too greasy. It's too waxy. It ain't working. I, but it did, it did catch enough that I could get those little, you know, just little slices of highlight. But I like the cutting board. I'm really happy with that. I'm happy with the wood grain look um, and the volume and the depth of the cutting board. The pepper, somebody said that it looked like the pepper was vomiting because I showed the painting on a sat chat last week. And uh, I had a laugh because, yeah, now that now I can't unsee that. I can't unsee the pepper vomit. Um, so now probably you can't either. So sorry about that. Uh, I'm still trying to get some more pencil to stick because I, again, I like that look. I feel like it's a, it's a very comfortable, um, crutch for me to fall back on. Uh, but it's kind of funny now to look back and like, look at myself struggle and have such a hard time because, you know, I'm far enough removed from it and I know how it came out and I'm pretty happy with it now. But man, when you are in it and you're just frustrated and struggling with your art, it is, it's such a bummer. You know, it's so it's so aggravating because you know you enjoy art you're doing it because you enjoy it and when it just doesn't go right it's so frustrating but it happens to everybody so you are not alone if you have those issues when you're working sometimes the best thing to do is just leave it be set it down on your easel walk away and then you'll see it when you come back in your craft space your art space your creative zone and it won't look as bad as you remember i promise i want to thank you so much for joining me today it was a lot of fun to create this for you and uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it thanks so much for watching until next time happy crafting <laughs>